Good morning, everybody. Today, I'm at Comorthin Slate Mine. I haven't explored this part of the valley yet, so I don't know what I'm gonna find. And this makes it exciting, a little bit concerning, just in case I can't find anything to photograph. I think Thomas Heaton came here a while back and he wasn't inspired by this location, but I'm completely the opposite. I love this place. It shows the history of this amazing country and there's so many relics of the mining industry here, as well as fantastic landscapes. This valley is so fascinating. There's bits of buildings and they're dotted around the whole valley. I can see one right far in the distance. I can see a little bit of one next to this slag heap here. The White House I've just photographed with the buildings behind that. And around the corner, that first photograph I took of the barracks or what's left of the barracks. But yeah, absolutely fascinating. Now I posed the question about ISO in the title just to try and get you to think about your photography and about how you're using your settings. ISO or ISO is one of those things that really riles up people. And if you can feel yourself getting a little bit triggered, then this video is definitely for you. This place just keeps on giving. Got what looks like an old church building in front of me with these trees. Then a huge slag heap up in the distance. The shot I'm thinking of is using this road as a leading line to the church. Then if I can, that slag heap in the background, but I might just get a corner of that in the frame. If I was talking about ISO and I was trying to explain it to you and I said ISO is the way that the camera controls the sensitivity of the sensor and when you up the ISO it brightens your shot enabling you to drop your other two settings how would this make you feel? If you're feeling riled up you're feeling like you want to click away click the thumbs down button or comment below angrily telling me the error of my ways this is one of the ways that ISO controls you and your emotions now before you do comment below I understand that ISO amplifies the signal from the sensor and it doesn't introduce any more light into your camera it just boosts the signal and this is where all of that noise comes from when you do shoot at high ISOs Quite nice there, though. Now, if you do feel like you're getting triggered by me saying these things, this is only YouTube. And I know it's kind of turned into a learning platform, but imagine if you pick up a camera and your first introduction to ISO is that it's the amplification of the signal from the sensor. That would confuse the hell out of a lot of people because there's so many other things to think about, like shutter speed, white balance, aperture, etc., etc. So in talking about ISO in terms of the sensitivity of the sensor, it's breaking it down into its simplest form. It's not actually that, but if you increase your ISO, it does brighten up your shot. And again, you're probably gonna be triggered by that again. So just take life a little bit less seriously. Every corner I go around, there's a derelict fallen down building or a slag heap, but there's so much to photograph here, as well as all these magnificent mountains all around me. Such an amazing place and such a big place as well. Now in talking about ISO, I've probably brought your attention to the settings that I'm shooting with. And you might notice that my ISO settings are all over the place. I started here around about six o'clock in the morning and it was pretty dark. So I did have to boost the ISO to get a good exposure. Now this leads me on to the second point about ISO and the talk of ISO invariant sensors. This is something that confuses a lot of people, especially beginners. 
Again, don't worry about ISO and variability. Just think about getting a good exposure and not worrying about any rubbish that people talk about online. Now this is quite a slog up the back here, but hopefully it'll be worth it. There's these massive slag heaps. And what I still can't get my head around is that all of these were piled out by hand. The miners dug them out of the ground, maybe had tracked trolleys and tipped them out here, but that's so much work. It's ridiculous. I also took a photograph from this camera, this exact scene. I quite like the way that the path goes down leads you into the scene. You've got all of these ruins down the bottom, then it goes along, you've got the tree, and then you've got the other mine works on the other side by the lake. Just think it makes for a nice scene. It is a bit backlit and it is a bit dark. Hopefully I can pull that out in Lightroom. Wow, it's properly dilapidated now. It's so windy. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot going on now. You can see, where are we? Up there. The sun's catching those rocky outcrops. The sky is completely blown out in this frame. It's so nice when that sun does come out. It's a shame it didn't come out for sunrise, but um, yeah, it's looking good now. It looks like we've got some kind of Maybe lenticular clouds up over there. Don't know if you could see them. These clouds over here look really interesting. phone over there. Shit. I left my phone right on the top of... <sighs> Luckily I haven't come too far away from it, but it's not in my pocket. Don't think it's in my bag as well, before I go back to my phone. Let's talk ISO. Now what I mean is that you're striving for that 100 ISO, nothing above, all the time. Now you can do this if you shoot from a tripod and if you slowly set up, but if you wanna shoot handheld and you just wanna go out and enjoy yourself and enjoy photography, you don't need to do that anymore. Cameras work so well with much higher ISOs. I'll shoot with anything up to four to 5,000 ISO if it means I'm shooting handheld. And if I'm shooting astrophotography, I'll be like 10 or 12,000 ISO as well. You can go above 100 and I say to definitely go above 100 because if you limit yourself to 100, as that light drops, you'll be limited to a tripod, you'll be limited by what you shoot, and you'll be limited how you shoot as well. Right, time to go and get my phone. So through this gap, I've got the mountains in the distance. I can see a kind of stream on the mountains, and that's being framed by this hut here. I really love how these buildings just layer up. So you've got the ruggedness of the mountains in the background, and then you've got the order of the buildings in the foreground, and then the chaos of this building collapsing right in the foreground. Uh, let's just hope my phone's still here. Not dropped in a hole or anything like that. <laughs> it is. Yes. <sighs> got it. So let's say it's a really windy day, a bit like I've got here today. Earlier on, when I took that first shot, I was shooting from a tripod. Now, with the lower ISO of 100, I think my settings were two and a half seconds, f5.6 to f8. I think I even opened the aperture as much as I could. However, with those settings, I was getting a little bit of shake in the tripod because of that wind. Now, if I kept my ISO at 100, what I'd have to do is lower the tripod and change my composition. 
but I really liked the composition that I had. So in raising my ISO, what I enabled the camera to do was to get a sharp image. There's a bit more noise in the image, but it's sharper. And I'd much prefer a sharp, noisy image over a clean, blurred image. This is one of the reasons why you shouldn't just go to ISO 100 at all costs. just trying to get to that rocky outcrop. I love shooting landscape where there's just a hint of a human element in there. Like here, you've got this road that comes around and it's a hint, it's at the bottom of the frame. The rest of it is just rugged nature. I love getting little hints like that in my shots. Now, if you do come to Wales, get some of these toffee waffles. They're absolutely fantastic. I'm addicted to them. However, when they're cold, they are pretty hard. I guess what I'm trying to say is not to worry too much about ISO and not be a stickler for keeping it 100 no matter what. You can boost it up. And if I'm shooting from a tripod, I'll try and get it down. But I, again, I don't worry too much about it. 320, 640, 1000. I know I'll get a good image with an ISO at that level. So if you do want to shoot in really low light or bad lighting conditions, don't worry too much about what other people say. As long as you get a good image from it, that's all that matters. Now, what do you think about ISO? Do you keep it at 100 or do you just play around with it like I do? Let me know in the comments below. It'll be great to hear your thoughts. And again, try and be civil in the comments. This is YouTube. This is a friendly place.